Hi, everybody. Uh, hope you're doing okay this morning. Today we're going to be talking about polymers, uh, some polymer chemistry. Now, I, I did give you the one reference um, to look at. It's a little difficult to find uh, instructional material on this topic uh, just because it's sometimes thought of as a little bit more um, of an advanced topic for later chemistry classes, but I think it's such a big part of our lives. It's really important for us to know about the chemistry of polymers, and um, we're not going to look at everything, uh, but some of the important chemistry, uh, the structure, the reactions, the properties that we see in these um, in these materials that are that are everywhere that we talked in class yesterday about how much they improve our lives, how there are certainly some pros and cons, some things we have to worry about with them, um, and hopefully we'll we'll kind of make that or help that make sense a little bit. Again, if you have questions, uh, let me know, and uh, either in the chat on YouTube or through Discord. I've got them both here, and I'll try to answer your questions. So first, uh, we'll start just by defining this idea. Uh, what is a polymer? Well, a pol polymer is a large molecule that is made up of a small molecule, or sometimes molecules, so more than one, repeatedly reacting. And I'll, so I'll show you what that means. I think it's maybe easier to actually see what that what that looks like. Um, so of course, there's lots of large molecules. There's things like like proteins and you know whatever. Um, what, what makes a polymer special? And we'll see some ways that they're similar to some of those biomolecules, and some of those actually do count as polymers. Is that you take some small molecule, like let's just express a molecule as um, a circle. So let's say this is a small molecule. Well, a polymer, you would take that small molecule and you would basically give it attachment points reactively so that it could react with other of, uh, others of the same exact thing and just start building this big chain until you've got maybe hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of those molecules kind of going on, on and on and on and making these really, really long chains. Um, so that's, that's the polymer. That's a polymer. And so then the, um, the other term that you should know about this structure is the molecule that is used to make it up is called a monomer. So mono means one, poly means many. So you've got the polymer, the whole thing, many of these little bits, um, and then you've got the monomer, which is each one, each individual re uh, molecule. So let's look at some examples of what those molecules would look like and how we can draw those structures. Um, this week we're going to focus on addition polymers, um, also known as chain growth polymers, and next week we're going to look at condensation polymers. So we'll start with um, a small molecule, C2H4. known as ethylene or sometimes ethene. The, the more correct name is ethene, but it's usually called ethylene. All right, so very small molecule, very simple, just two carbons, four hydrogens, double bond between the carbons. Well, one thing that you can do with this molecule, and um, actually I'm going to redraw it in its condensed form to make things a little easier when we start drawing these big polymers. So I'm going to call this CH2. CH2, like that. So we're still showing the double bond, um, but we're condensing the hydrogens down on the carbons. Uh, so what this molecule can do um, is that that double bond can be made somewhat reactive so that it can, the, uh, the electrons in one of the two bonds here can go on, can kind of reach out and grab other molecules. And that's done through something called an initiator. So you react this with a molecule that initiates the reaction. And that, um, 
there's lots of different, I'm, I'm being deliberately vague there because there's lots of different possible initiators that can do this. There's things called radical initiators that use single electron, that break it into single electrons. There's um, cation and anion initiators that make ions. So there's something that kind of messes with this molecule that breaks up one of these double bonds. And then what that allows it to do is it no longer has a double bond. And since we know that carbon still needs four bonds total, we can't just, it's not just going to exist like that. It's going to be very reactive. And so uh, that reactivity allows it to react with more of these uh, since they're all, you know, together in the reaction mixture. So it's going to react more and more and more. And that's going to keep going and going. I know my head's in the way here, but uh, here, I'll move it up. Make myself a little smaller too. Um, so that's going to, um, keep going. And if you, if you really do your bond, your accounting around the bonds, like how many things are connected to the carbons, you'll see that actually the ends need them too. So we often express, um, polymer structures as infinite like this, even though realistically they're not infinite. Um, but we sort of say they just keep going on and on. So we don't really have to worry about what's on the ends. Um, in reality, there are, they're terminated. The, the ends have some other kind of thing going on. Um, there's a way that they that they deal with this. So maybe one end is a CH3, or maybe there's another molecule attached to the to the end and the other end. But for our purposes, we're just going to say it keeps going on and on. And if we analyze this polymer chain, we should always be able to pick out the monomer. Right. So we can see here three monomers connected together. And they don't have the double bond anymore, but they haven't lost any atoms. So the double bond has become these connections in between the monomers. The atoms are all still accounted for. So we've got carbons, we've, we've got two hydrogens on each carbon, and so that's our polymer chain. To name this molecule, if the monomer is called ethylene, then the polymer is just called polyethylene. So we just put poly in front of the name and the name in parentheses. And some of these really common ones, like polyethylene, sometimes the parentheses even gets dropped and it just be becomes one word, polyethylene. Um, so that's how basic polymerization works. This is known as an addition polymer. or also known as a chain growth polymer. Any kind of, of polymerization like this, where you start with a double bond or sometimes a triple bond, and it expands and then uh, reacts with itself, and you get this polymer. All right. Another way that we can express this, uh, th there's various ways we can draw these structures. I'll try to see if I can fit that up there. We can make it even more clear, um, well, I don't know about one more clear. We can condense this even further. We can just go CH2, 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 CH2 without even the lines in there. I like putting the lines in because we can then see where it came from and, and how to break it back apart if we need to. But we can also use our line structures. Um, now, I know we haven't specifically talked about those in a little bit, but um, if you recall back, maybe go refresh your memory on how to draw some of those structures. We can actually get rid of those carbon, the, those carbons entirely, and we can just express ethylene as as this kind of a structure. Um, that's also ethylene, because we know that there's going to be a carbon at each end, and we know there has to be two hydrogens at each end as well. Um, and so, definitely, if that seems like something new or something you don't remember, go back to the unit. I think it was module two or three on polymers, uh, or I'm sorry, on line structures, so that you refresh your memory on how to draw those. So same thing, we can make this into this polymer. And then if you think about it, this polymer is really just a chain of carbons single bonded together. So expressing that in the line structure is just going to look like this. And we can kind of keep going as long as we want, right? Because it's a polymer. We're just saying it sort of keeps going and keeps going. We'll use some little dots to um, say, it. you know, it doesn't end. And then we should, again, be able to um, group the 
if we wanted to, the monomers. So we, we can pick out any two carbons become uh, monomers here, like these, these. Right. So we don't have to do that, but that's a way that we can analyze what's going on here. The reason that I did that in both of these cases is because often when, when you look at um, drawn structures of polymers, if you want to look at what a, what a polymer structure looks like, what they'll do is they'll use this um, parentheses notation in order to not have to draw this chain that goes over and over again, especially as the structure gets more complicated. So um, going up, up back up to this one, another way that we could express this is to just draw one of these and say it keeps repeating and repeating. So that would look like CH2, CH2. That's really the, um, the smallest piece of the structure that still expresses what the monomer was. And then we put two more bonds there to show that it, it is not just a single isolated molecule, but it keeps going. And then we use some parentheses with a little N to say this thing repeated over and over again n times. And if we're talking about a specific number, we could put that number here. So if we want to look at the polymer where there are exactly 500 or, uh, of these units, then we could put a 500 here, and we're talking about exactly 500 of those together. We can also do this in the line structure form. Um, we can kind of put our, oh, you know what? I missed a, I'm going to delete this down here just because it doesn't fit with these other ones. So we can take one of these monomers and, and do this the same way. So that would be a line structure way of expressing polyethylene. So these are all different ways of expressing polyethylene. So what should you be able to do now? Um, or what, by the end of this, what do you want to be able to do? Well, you want to be able to go either way. So if you see a monomer structure, you should be able to draw the polymer that would result from that. And how do you do that? You take out the double bond, and you connect on either side, and you just keep drawing over and over again. And you can draw them in this form, or you should be able also to draw in these types of other uh, forms that we've looked at. And if you need to go back and refresh your memory on line structures, please do that. Another thing that you should be able to do is go the other way. So if you look at a polymer structure, whether it's drawn like this, or like this, or like this, can you draw what that monomer structure was? Where did it come from? So to do that, we're going to do the opposite. Uh, we're going to remove these outer connections and restore the double bond between the two carbons. And that will get us our monomers. OK. So now to practice this um, and to learn a little bit more about polymer chemistry, let's look at some common polymers and how we draw them. So the first, the most of these are going to be kind of based off of ethylene. So if we take that ethylene again, but instead of CH2, we have CH and then another carbon connected. Now instead of ethylene, this is propylene. So three carbons, propylene. And um, we can draw this as a polymer as well. And for practice, let's do this both in the condensed structures and in the line structures. So propylene in a line structure would look something like that. So when we draw the polymer, we want to, again, redraw the monomer, but without the double bond. And that's going to become our connections to the other monomers. Right, so there's our monomer without the double bond, and then the double bond extends between these two carbons now to connect. Now notice it doesn't come off of this other carbon uh, down here. Why not? Well, a couple reasons. One, that's not where the electrons are, um, but we can also see that from just counting things. We know carbon has to have four bonds, one, two, three, four. We can't put an extra connection there unless we were to remove a hydrogen. So there's no room for any more connections off of this carbon. Um, and a good rule of thumb is just to remember that in, in most of these structures that we're going to see, we're going to have two carbons between a double bond. And those are the two carbons that are going to make up the polymer chain. And everything else is going to be hanging off. 
Um, so we might call them side chains or substituents. Uh, you might hear some of these other words, but just these things like extra pieces that are hanging off the main chain. All right, so this isn't really a polymer exactly yet. Um, let's connect another one of these to this one. So the exact same thing. We're just going to do it again. And again, and there's no rule of how many you need to do. Um, you know, it kind of depends on room and how big you're drawing things. Uh, but the idea is just remembering that, that this repeats over and over and over and over again. And we're going to keep having that two carbon repetition. And after you draw something like this, always just go back and look at it. It should be repetitive, right? It's the same thing repeating over and over again. So you should be able to see, like, if something looks like the spacing is is different on one side than the other, you know, maybe you forgot a carbon in there. So go back and go, okay, carbon, I got one, two, thing hanging off. One, two, thing hanging off. One, two, thing hanging off, something like that. All right, um, let's also then draw it in a, um, in a uh, more abbreviated form with the parentheses. So we could just take one of these and extend those lines through some parentheses with n. That would be another way of expressing that. And then we can do that in the um, uh, line structure as well. So again, with the line structure, this can be a little bit, it can cause a mistake here because it's not, you know, it, it seems like you just keep extending this chain out, out here. We have to remember from learning how those line structures work that this carbon is actually a CH3, right? Just like this one. And so we don't have any room to extend from there. So the extension again goes between one and two. So it's coming this way and this way. And those things are just going to be hanging off. If that's confusing, uh, use numbers to help you to see that. So that then when you... Um, when you draw that, you can go, all right, I've got a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And I'm going to number that again just to make sure. So here's my one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Um, and then I can add my uh, my CH3 coming off of carbon number two, just as it is in the monomer. And then I have my extra bonds that just show that it's continuing. Um, if I want to make this a more abbreviated format, it would look something like this. Okay. And this polymer is called polypropylene. Right? If you look um, at those plastic codes uh, that you see, those numbered codes that we talked a little bit about yesterday, um, PP is polypropylene. I think it's number, I'm going to forget now, five maybe? I can't remember which number it is. Uh, do I have, let's see if I have it up here. Five, yeah. Polypropylene is five. Um, so uh, polypropylene is used in a lot of different things. Um, one is that you've almost certainly seen is food containers, uh, like the dis like the sort of sort of disposable but also reusable food containers, the plastic, you know, Ziploc, Glad type containers, uh, yogurt containers. They are polypropylene does not break down with water the way that the bioplastics that you saw the bioplastics do yesterday. And so you can use that to you can use it to so, uh, store food, and it will last. It doesn't have a lot of these um, additives, the uh, plasticizers, things that can leach out into your food. So if you remember back a number of years ago, there were issues with this chemical called BPA, um, which we're going to talk about next week in plastics, and polypropylene never had that. So that was always a good alternative for food storage. Um, polypropylene can break down with heat, so that's why you're not supposed to uh, like microwave food in in those types of containers. Usually, um, they're generally not 
microwave or uh, heat safe. But they're good for storing things cold. Most candy wrappers are also polypropylene. All right. So now we're going to do one that's the opposite. I'm going to draw the polymer, and then you're going to try to draw the monomer. We're going to figure out what was the monomer that this polymer came from. All right, so first I'll draw it in a long chain with a line structure with line structures. A few different repeat units. This is a CL chlorine. All right, so see if you can draw the monomer that that came from. You can either use line structures or uh, condensed structures, or best thing would be to try both. See if you can do both. If you're watching live, just, just give it a try. Um, if you're watching later, maybe pause the video, see if you can draw it, and then come back. All right, so um, let's look at how to do this. We're going to look at how this thing is repeating, right? You should be able to pick out a pattern here where there is a CH2 and then a CH with a CL coming off of it. It looks very similar to the polypropylene just with this chloride. Um, so we should be able to kind of see that this piece here repeats over and over again. And that's going to be the key to our monomer. So we're going to kind of break off those connections, just focus in on those two carbons, and put a double bond between them. In a line structure, that would look like this. In a condensed structure, we would have CH2, CH, and then CL. This polymer is polyvinyl chloride. Um, also known as PVC. This one uh, is code 3, and PVC is used in all kinds of things. Most applications where you uh, refer to something as vinyl, except for records, like, like music records, um, that's a different, a different vinyl. But things like, well, PVC, like drain pipe, you know, water pipes, um, but also things like vinyl siding. Um, you see PVC used in really anywhere you need really uh, strong resistance to any kind of water or like fouling. It's hard for uh, microorganisms to grow, like molds and things like that to grow on PVC, although they do eventually. So things like shower curtains, anything that's going to be in contact with water a lot. Um, it's very, very durable. Uh, so durable, in fact, that the waste issues with PVC is, is really kind of an, a problem. Because if you you know, take all the vinyl siding off your house, let's say, um, to replace it with something that is going to essentially be around forever. There's really nothing you can do with that. Um, they are now starting to find some ways to recycle it. There's a big problem with recycling PVC because these chlorine atoms end up coming off and making some really um, nasty toxic gases. So you never want to heat up anything vinyl or PVC. Uh, so it's very difficult to try to melt it down and remake anything out of it. It also causes problems recycling other plastics because if some PVC gets in there, it can react with the other plastics and cause problems in the recycling process. Um, so it really needs to be treated separately. And ideally, these things would be reused, um, repurposed, if, if at all possible, uh, just because all that stuff that gets sent to the landfill, it really is going to stick around essentially forever. So really the opposite of the bioplastics that we looked at last time. All right, so that's the basics of addition polymers. Um, again, uh, or if since this is polyvinyl chloride, the monomer then is named vinyl chloride. All right, so that's the basics of how to draw addition polymer structures. So as an assignment, uh, and to kind of practice this,
in your notebook or, or OneNote or whatever, find a few Find a few more addition polymers. And draw the monomers. And draw the, the polymers also in all the different ways that we've just talked about. So condensed structures, line structures, um, a bunch of them in a row. Also the parentheses notation with the N um, that we've looked at. If you can go back and forth and draw all these things uh, for any polymer that you find, that's a good, good way to kind of check that you can actually do this. And then the final step is find do a little research on the uses of those polymers um, so those ones that you find now that you've drawn the structures you've looked at them what are they used for and how do the structures influence the properties that's something we didn't talk a whole lot about today, but like why, why have, why does having a chlorine on there give polyvinyl chloride those exceptional um, st water stability qualities that it has? Why does propolypropylene have some different properties from polyethylene? What does that extra CH3 do? Um, and so for the, for the polymers that you find, ask those same questions. These, because I think what you're going to see is the structures all basically look more or less the same with a little change in whatever's coming off. So the structural part should be relatively easy to draw just based on looking at what we've done here. Um, so why do those little changes matter so much? How do those affect um, the structures? And then just as a, a, a little bit of a warning here, not really a warning, but make sure that these are actually addition polymers. There's lots and lots of all kinds of polymers, and we're going to look at a whole different category called condensation polymers next week. These are ones that come from double bonds. Uh, so if you're looking at the polymer structures and you're seeing a lot of other atoms in the chain, oxygen, nitrogen, things like that, that are part of that repeating chain, um, that's probably not an addition polymer. So focus on ones that are built out of just a carbon chain like these uh, that come from these double bond monomers. And you could probably just look up, you know, different types of addition polymers and, and find some. But give that a try. Uh, make sure you can draw them. And of course, come see me. Ask uh, next Wednesday if you have any issues or if it's not working. Next week, we'll talk about condensation polymers and some more um, properties of polymers and applications. Um, so hopefully that work is going okay for you. Uh, in lab next week, we'll have the leaf lab. So there will be some more instructions coming on that um, because it's a, it's a bit more involved uh, than some of the stuff we've done lately. And again, introducing some new techniques. I think it'll be interesting and, and worthwhile, but it is going to take a little bit of work. So I'll get that up on Blackboard um, and give you some more information as we get closer to Wednesday. Uh, all right, well, have a good weekend. Hopefully everybody's doing well. And let me know if you need any help uh, finding this information. Thanks, everybody.